Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today we have a, a groundswell of interest in the application of the three pillars to walking. And uh, how, do we, how do we bring that into our life more so that it's not just while you're doing your Tai Chi, but it's, it's something that's happening all day. Anytime you, anytime you think about it, you, you, can, you can access the three pillars. The advantage of that is that you are creating a, a, an internal environment that allows you to, to access more energy, more vitality, and you're also better able to circulate the energy throughout the whole system, so which then enhances your uh, your overall health and uh, uh, well-being, but it also kind of um, creates a familiarity so that it is right there anytime you need it. And so it's not something that you're, you're going to be in all the time because that's, uh, well, it, it's something we're probably, you're probably not going to be, but you, the ability to go there anytime you want. So just to cut back here and explain what I'm talking about regarding the three pillars. And that is, uh, these are what I'm calling the three pillars of body, mind, spirit integration. So this is how you are holding your body and moving in such a way as to be able to integrate your physicality your mentality and, and, and spirit, your ability to move into a state of wholeness and access a super conscious awareness. And um, it's something I've been playing with over the last 40 years, kind of narrowing it down to what are the essentials here? And so we'll get up in a moment and, and do that. But just as an overview, the three pillars I'm talking about are energetic coherence. And that's something that is, we have, um, I've been exploring for a while. And it, it, that is your ability to get the whole system, your whole body mind into a heightened state of coherence. That is a state of wholeness, unity, um, where all the parts are cooperating together at a, at a very high level. And the, the tool that I discovered a couple of decades ago that really enhances that very quickly is to point and reach with your with your index fingers and to be able to actually feel that. And so what that does is it, it activates your connective tissue system and creates a heightened state of um, uh, awareness through the, uh, uh, the connective tissue system, which allows energy and information to pass much quicker. The connective tissue system is the only system in the body that is actually integrating uh, every cell in your body. It actually goes to the to the very uh, uh, the very nucleus of every cell. So you, uh, whenever you create a heightened state of coherence there, then you are you're able to function at a higher level. So learning how to enhance your coherence. And just as a note, it just by the very fact that you're alive, you are in a state of coherence. That is, you've got roughly 70 trillion cells and just to get them to all cooperate and function together, it requires a certain level of coherence. And that, so just by being alive, you're coherent. But if you can enhance your coherence even a little bit, cool stuff happens. And, um, I've been discussing that many times on, 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 on this, this, uh, these sessions. So uh, I'm not gonna go into that in great detail, but uh, we can uh, explore that more uh, in the context of the three pillars. The, uh, the second pillar is central equilibrium. The, uh, and that is how you hold your body in relation to the earth. And, and, and the sky and being able, what you, there's a verticality there that we've been working on since we're about a year old when we first learned to walk. 
And a lot of the habits that we set up whenever we first learned to walk, we're still using today. And many of them are less than uh, optimum. And for the most part, most people do what they did when they're when they one year old and they, they had their weight primarily in their heels and which it has gotten you this far, but it is not uh, optimum. It's not the most efficient way of creating an energetic connection with the earth. So just like if you, uh, you know, any kind of sport, you see the, you're, you're taught to get in the balls of your feet. So the, the weight is over the balls of your feet rather than leaning back into your heels. When anytime you're in your heels, you're back as far in your posture as you can get. And what it causes, it causes a, uh, a stagnation in your chi. So if you just get the idea of being over the balls of your feet, and just to clarify what the ball of the foot means, I'm just going to show you the ball of my foot here. So it's this point right here on the big toe line, okay, that big knob there, and uh, that bone is what we refer to the balls of the feet. So you orient your, your weight around that. The weight is spread throughout the whole foot, but it, that's the bullseye. That's what you're aiming. That's the point of contact. And when, that, when you have your, your, your centered on that, then your Yong Chuan point, which is the kidney one point, the bubbling spring, bubbling well, it is where the energy of the earth uh, enters the body. And if your weight's in your heels, the chances are very likely that that is, that is, um, that connection is not being made. Whereas if your weight is over the balls of your feet, it opens the energy gate there and allows this insubstantial energy from the earth to come up and fill up your system, which means that you are plugging into the big chi. You're plugging in, you're getting more vitality there. So I'm just giving the cliff notes here on the uh, on the three pillars because we're going to get up and, and we're going to actually do it here shortly and and it's each of these each of these topics can it deserves their own hour of of discussion but uh, so that's the the negative pole that's the point where you're you're accessing the earth chi from uh, through the feet so the knees are unlocked so that your knees are kind of settled so that your weight is over the balls of the feet so then the the opposite point, the, 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 the North Pole on that is the crown of the head. So it's not up here at the top of the head, but it's actually here at the, uh, the posterior fontanelle. So you reach up with that. You don't just relax that. You actually are extending upward without tensing your neck. So you're, you're doing that. You're lengthening the neck as you reach up with that. And at the same time, if... Uh, there's a tendency for people to kind of just stick their chin out and hang out like this. You want to reach up with the crown and draw the chin in, which then opens up the, uh, this point, this area right here. It's actually these two points here. It's the jade pillow gate, but it, I want you to focus on this point right there where the atlas is. That's where the topmost vertebrae, where the spine enters into the cranium. And uh, so we open up that area at the base of the skull there, the suboccipital area. And this allows for a massive infusion of vitality. The Chinese call that Jing Shen, which is the spirit of vitality. And so if you do that, because what happens is whenever you're, whenever you're kinking the hose there at the base of your skull, it blocks the flow of cerebral spinal fluid, it blocks the flow of blood, it blocks the energy moving in and out of the, uh, between the head and the body. So when you open that up, you get this, this sense of connection with the whole system. So we reach up with the crown and we sink down through the balls of the feet and we create this, these two poles in opposition, lengthening the spine, creating space in the, in the vertebrae and allowing this, this, uh, resistance-free uh, pathway for the chi to flow. 
So the, uh, those are your, your two points, your, your first two gates, central equilibrium or uh, uh, energetic coherence and then central equilibrium. The third pillar is, I call it um, unkink the hose. And we've already talked about that with the jade pillow gate, unkinking the hose there. If you think of a, a garden hose, you put a kink in it and the flow stops. You open up the kink and then the, the flow happens. So that's what's going on in your body. So there are many, many kinks in the hose in your body, but there are several that are really key. So one is at the jade pillow gate. The other one is at the, um, at the hip joint. So we, what the Chinese call the qua. So the getting the qua released and, and, and be able to release down your weight down into your legs is um, part of this, this, this thing. So you're, you're, un, you're unblocking the muscular tension in your butt and in your, uh, and in your legs that causes the chi to constrict there. So that's, a, uh, uh, that's one of the, the, the places where the, one of the energy gates that, that uh, gets, gets blocked. The other one is in the shoulders. Tense shoulders tend to block energy. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that we automatically tense up if we want to move our arms at all. And to be able to learn to do otherwise is, is another important part of what we're doing here. So to unlock, unlock the shoulder gates, we just reach with the elbow. So that is your just have a sense of just extending outward with the or down or whatever it just you're opening up creating space in your shoulder joints so when you do that there's ah there it creates space there and allows the chi to flow so we have we have energetic coherence that is making the whole system into a heightened state of organization and functionality we have central equilibrium which opens the the energy gates for the big chi. So that means you're plugging into a system which is much bigger, virtually infinite energy. The, and you're able to then take in as much as you can handle. And, and so, and it also creates a, a stability which allows you when you're in central equilibrium, it gives you this effortless power that um, I've discussed many times, but it's, you know, it creates this, this soft power that is characteristic of Taiji Tran that uh, is quite remarkable. And it, the more you can tap into this, the uh, more remarkable the, the, the feats that are, you're able to accomplish with, with very simple movements. You, you very much in, uh, out of proportion to the amount of effort that you're, you're using. It's, it seems almost effortless. So uh, those are your three pillars. So with that, uh, uh, before we go any further, any questions on any of that? That's a lot of information for, for new guys, but uh, uh, anything more on that? Scott, you have something? Um, just any thoughts on the uh, three pillars while you're sitting? While you're sitting, pretty much the same. Uh, pretty much the same thing, but just while you're sitting, straight back and yeah, uh, you know, you can find your central equilibrium no matter what position you're in. But you start off with getting it so that you're finding your center, you know, over over the supporting structure because the key to it is you want to feel safe. Whenever you feel safe with by your by relaxing by releasing down into your uh, supporting structure, then that allows the rest of your body to relax and and you're able to then the energy moves more freely and you're able to express it with a minimum of effort. If you are if I'm le if I'm like this, then I'm, my central equilibrium is is going to be off. I can find it there, but it's it's much harder work. To do that so but if i get if i have my my body i'm looking for that there's a place that a sweet spot where i can hold my body and it's like okay this is this is the place and you know 
you, you could do by sitting up and just holding yourself. But you can also stick a pillow behind your back and relax into that and, and allow your, your center to, you know, your body to get centered. Your ability to unkink the hose as well is like, you know, if you're, if you're like this while you're typing, you know, it, uh, it's going to, it's going to jam things up. So getting, so exploring each of these ideas in a sitting position is a great idea and it will create, uh, you know, uh, a lot of vitality and will also open up your, your mind so that you are, you get a sense of clarity. You can move more easily into the gap between thoughts whenever you're sitting, whenever you're doing it, regardless of what you're doing. You know, Jonathan has always been preaching the gospel of, of, uh, of practicing this stuff while sitting on the couch. You want to say a couple of words on that, Jonathan? You're on, you're on mute. There we go. Yeah, it, it's, it's a version of lost positions. Like, you know, Rick does this thing where he stands there and you challenge him and he, you know, comes out of it. It's like, you're often in that kind of position when you're sitting in a chair and it's like, rather than just, uh oh, you know, like just do just what he does, like slowly you see him find the energetic, the, the central equilibrium and the three pillars to get himself out. And you can do the same thing, watching TV in a chair, just say, okay, I'm gonna just, you know, bring coherence here and establish, you know, maybe I'll hit the ball of my foot now and maybe I'll, and you know, without changing your position too much, you brought coherence into it. I do most of my Tai Chi watching television these days. <laughs> the opinions expressed are not necessarily those of the management. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's uh, uh, anybody else, any other? Uh, any other questions before we get move forward? Questions, comments, corrections, arguments. Okay, let's uh, let's uh, let's do this. So uh, we'll start by exploring the three pillars. Actually, sit down a moment and just uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna just uh, do the first one sitting down. Just uh, and that is feeling into your your fingers. So getting your Getting your energetic your energetic coherence is the simplest way that I've found is to just point and reach with your index finger. And that doesn't mean like this, right? It's just very it's like with the amount of effort it would take to flick a light switch. You know, bloop. so you're you're just reaching, you can wiggle the finger, or whatever, but the idea is that there is an extension here, as if you're going to, oh, you're gonna touch something, you're gonna flip that light switch. And there's no muscular tension involved. It's just a little flick there. And when you do that, when you make that connection, when you actually feel your finger, there is a connection that goes through your nervous system that turns the lights on for you. And it, what it does, any, any, kind of uh, movement like that or, or uh, a directed impulse like that, what it does is it signals the connective tissue system. It sends a, what's called a piezoelectric charge, which is just anytime we do anything with, with muscles or anything like that, there's creates this little electricity, which is sent throughout the whole connective tissue system instantaneously. It's, you know, I've heard it said it's at the speed of light, but I'm, I'm not. I, I wouldn't. I'm not going to swear to that. But it it's super fast, so it's much faster, much much faster than the nervous system. So your your response to so anytime you you do that, there's if to the degree that you can bring your awareness to that and actually feel it, not just think about it, but feel it, it creates a state of coherence. So if you, if you do it right now, if you just put your hands in your lap and you point your index fingers and feel into that, and you'll notice that very quickly that your mind clears. You immediately go into the gap between thoughts. 
you've shifted which part of your nervous system is handling the present moment. And it does bring you into the present moment because you're no longer thinking about the moment, you're in it and you're here you are. So by getting energetically coherent, you immediately can activate that state of awareness that we aspire to in meditation. This becomes a form of instant meditation. Within a, a second or two, you can, you can clear the mind. And then of course the mind will kick it up again and say, hey, what was that? When we do it, what you do there? And then it starts, to, it starts up again. And then you, what do you do? Oh, you point again. And you feel that. And, and each time the thoughts come up, you point and point and point until you start to get a shift where it becomes a much more stable state where you can maintain that gap between thoughts for an extended period of time. The first time, at first you might just be able to do it for a second or two. And then after a while though, you get it so that, oh, time goes by and you're, you're there. And the thoughts may bubble up like a lava lamp and you just kind of watch them float, but you're, you are watching the thoughts. So you have moved into a super conscious state where you're able to observe the workings of your mind. You're no longer using the eye of mind, you've moved into the eye of spirit. So that's with the energetic coherence. So there's a whole lot more we can do with energetic coherence, but that's, that's the, quick, uh, the quick version. So just getting that, so anytime, any place, you point your index finger and to the extent that you can feel them, you're going to be able to create a state of wholeness. And from that wholeness, cool stuff happens. We can then start to expand into all kinds of other abilities, but it's at that bedrock of uh, present time, the radical present, and where you're able to just be prior to the do. So now we're going to do into the do, and we're going to go and we're going to stand up and we're going to explore central equilibrium. Now put your feet about a hip width apart. And just notice where in your feet your weight is. That's not something you might never have looked at before, but I'm, not, I'm talking to more than just the people who are present on this call. Anybody who's checking the YouTube video later, you know, you can see that too. It's like, okay, just check where in your feet feet is just and for for fun bring your weight back into your heels and lock your knees and just feel what that feels like so in in a sense it's kind of a a lazy way to be you can kind of just hang out here you can lock things up and hang out but if you feel into your back you'll notice that your back muscles have tensed up to do this same thing with your butt muscles so there's a lot of muscular contraction that's happening at a pre-conscious level to be able to keep you from falling backward. So it creates a low level of stress that is pretty much persistent throughout your day. So you don't, you're never really rid of this, this tension. So shift your weight so that you're feeling the balls of your feet and Unlock the knees so that you're not bending them much, but just enough so that they're not locked up. And so your weight is centered over the balls of the feet. And just notice what that feels like, as if you're like on a diving board, you're gonna dive in. So you're, you're feeling that. Notice that there's, an, uh, there's a sense, a dynamic quality to this. The energy is moving. And by having your weight over the balls of your feet, you're opening up the bubbling well. And that allows the energy, there's an energy exchange between your feet and the earth. The yin chi of the earth, that is the, the supportive chi that, uh, that creates stability and, and connection that is ascending, is coming up through your feet. 
and into your body. Same time, the yang chi, the, that has come down through your body, it has a place to go now. So for those of us who get stuck with energy, stuck in our heads, we have uh, like thought forms out of control and things like that. That's a lot of times because you're not opened up to the, to the, to the earth. You, there's no place for that energy to go. So the yang chi just kind of rattles around in your head and it, it locks up and creates anxiety, it creates stress. But if you have the, the bubbling well open, then there's a place for it to go. So the yin chi is coming up, the yang chi is going down and we have this exchange now. So you're no longer a closed system where it's just Rick and Rick's energy here within Rick's body. It's not, no, Rick is part of a big, a big energy system now. There's, there's uh, a virtually infinite resource that is, is accessible to this point. And it, you know, it's, for me, it's, it's, it's just the degree to which I am willing to tolerate that energy and be able to integrate it into my body. So I, I feel into that and, and I gradually upgrade my wiring to handle more and more chi. So the knees, knees are, are soft. So you're feeling you're sinking down. Now you're gonna reach up with the crown of your head Tuck in the chin and open the jade pillow gate. And we do that without losing the sinking into the feet. So there's two counter impulses that are occurring at the same time. That is the reaching up with the head, with the crown, reaching down through the feet and into the earth. And reaching up with the crown allows the Yang Chi of the heavens, and that's the creative, vibrant, um, expansive energy. It comes down and it, it comes down through the crown and moves down through the body and animates the system. So we have two qualities here, the Yang, which is the animator, the creative impulse, the Yin impulse from the earth is creates the structure. It's the substantial aspect. And so as you're doing this, just feel into your hands and notice that your hands are starting to buzz. They're filling up. You may notice increased circulation in your fingers, tingling, pulsing, maybe some heat. And that's because the chi is, is, finds its way to the hands very quickly. So it's your best barometer to indicate that you've got a really good energetic connection. If you're feeling those, those hands and the degree that you're feeling them, so then you're getting a, um, a, a solid connection there. Relax your lower back and allow your sacrum to drop, your here. So if you're if the butt sticking out like that, that's creating a tension here. So you want to just, just drop that. So the knees are unlocked and you're just allowing your, your tailbone to point down toward the earth. So we're creating a, a the two poles in opposition between the crown and the, and, the, and the tailbone as well. And that lengthens the spine and creates a super highway for the chi to flow on. So we have energetic coherence, point and reach with your fingers. So feel into that. And we have central equilibrium. Feel the balls of your feet, reach with the crown of your head and feel your weight settling over the balls of your feet. And just for fun, just go back into your heels now and just notice what happens to the energy whenever you do that. Now go back into the balls of your feet 
And notice how that there's an instantaneous energetic connection that occurs. And we want to develop that. And it takes some practice to do it. it takes some practice just to be able to feel, allow your legs to do that because I know for a lot of people, you'll feel it in the calf muscles because if you've been leaning back your whole life, your calves have gotten, the muscles there have gotten kind of short. And so if you're actually over the balls of your feet for any length of time, it's like this time to say, hey, what's the big deal? So you, you pace yourself, you take little breaks and, you know, but you, you want to get that so that you're starting to elongate those calf muscles and the connective tissue there, elongate the Achilles and, and be able to tolerate more space in the backs of your legs. Now, uh, the third pillar is, as I said before, the uh, unkink the hose. We have the at, the, at the base of the skull, unkink the hose there. Also, there's a, at the qua, the, uh, the, at the hip joint. So we, right here where the legs, the thigh meets the torso, we have the inguinal crease. And there's a, a you can feel into that. And this is the, that's our target for, for the qua. We want to be able to relax the muscles so that we're sinking down into the legs and being able to uh, feel the support, the relaxed support of the legs rather than, you know, and the way we train this is to just to do what you're ordinarily inclined to do, which is to push away from the earth. So to do that, push away. And so you're feeling your, oh, you're lifting your body up and then oh, release down and sink. So you're feeling yourself releasing down into the support of your, of your legs and, and the qua here. So this becomes what we call sung or releasing into the supporting structure. Do that again, push away and ah, release. So you feel, ah, feel that nice relaxation. It's almost like you're sitting down into your legs. You still want to maintain your weight over the balls of your feet, at least centered over the balls of your feet. And that third place, that, that third major gate is the shoulders. So just rather than just letting your arms hang like this, just reach out a little bit with the elbows so that you have a roundedness to the, to the arm. So feel your fingers, reach to the crown, feel the balls of your feet, feel the softness in your, in your body as you relax into the supporting structure. And the more you can trust this, the easier it is to, to access it anytime you need it. So just, we're just gonna hang out here for a minute. I just feel into that and feel the energy circulating. Feel into your fingers, because that's, that's your best barometer. You also notice in your feet, may, your feet may be getting hot. Good. So now we're going to uh, take this forward. So the question that came up is how do we implement this into, uh, into the simple act of walking? Because that's something we do a lot of. And uh, so walking is we're taking this, this, these qualities, uh, these three pillars, and we're creating a dynamic uh, relationship with our surroundings when we do that. So if I'm if I'm walking unconsciously and I'm just kind of just kind of meandering about, I'm tending to kind of fall forward into into my into my legs. And there's a uh, um, my legs are 
are not, there's no give in them. They're just kind of, they're blocky. So there's a, and there's a clunkiness to, to that. What we want to do, if we're, we're implementing the three pillars into this, is to be very mindful of, of, of the way we're walking and where the weight gets transferred, how it gets transferred, and being able to, to maintain that, uh, that sense of energetic connection throughout the whole system while we're doing it. So if, if I'm gonna take a step forward, you know, I pick up my back heel, we're doing this real slow motion here just so you can get the idea. So the um, begin by feeling that, that right leg, you push away and uh, sink into that right leg. So you're going down into the earth, into that. You pick up the left heel and step forward with that. And so notice that as I step forward, I put down the heel first. And then I roll through my foot. So a lot of times people just kind of clump along and they hit with their heels, but they never activate the toes. They never roll off the toes. What we're doing here is we're sinking down into the right leg here, picking up the left heel, stepping forward, pick up the left foot, stepping forward and placing the heel down, and then rolling forward and pushing the knee forward as you roll the roll the foot forward to your. Now you, the knee is set over the ball of the foot now, and I uh, release down into the into the, the claw on the left side, pick up the right heel and step forward, heel first. And this is exaggerated, so you can see what I'm doing, but I step forward with the right foot, heel first and roll. And knee comes, knee comes forward and you feel that over the ball of the foot. So, at this point, if we were to stop motion, I am central equilibrium on my, on my right leg. Okay, if, I'm, if I do this I kind of, and I'm pushing away from the earth as I do this, then I have no energetic connection. I'm, I'm, I've broken that. I'm launching myself forward, but, I'm, but I've, I've broken my, my connection there. So I want to feel that and sink, pick up the left heel, and step forward, heel first, ball, set the knee, sink into the left leg and step. Okay, so you're sinking the left leg, pick up the right foot, step forward, heel, ball, sink, left foot. Good, and then stepping backward, you can step backward, place the, the toe down first, the ball, and then, then into the heel, and then you sink into the left leg. You pick up the right foot, step back with that. Heel, toe, ball. So you're feeling a central equilibrium there, and same thing with the left foot. So if we speed that up, is is heel, ball, sink. Step, heel, ball, sink. And so you're going along like this. And as I say, I'm exaggerating it. If I'm doing it just like, like I would, I'm, I'm doing all those things right now. And it doesn't look weird because it's just, it's something that, you know, I'm just kind of smoothly uh, in, in incorporating each of these things. But at any point, I want to be able to oh, stop, freeze, and have that sense of, of, of central equilibrium uh, whenever I'm, I'm doing that. So the, uh, in practice, just, I guess the first thing to, to be aware of, you, know, you, you start off by, by feeling into the central, uh, the, the three pillars. So you your body is, is prepared, it recognizes what that feels like. And then when you start it moving, you, you are conscious of different aspects of it. And it becomes a, a learning process where you're adding little pieces at a time. 
when you have a uh, if you have to go somewhere with the with the walking, you know, you're 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 just you're just saying, oh, okay, what I'm gonna be focusing on right now is am I hitting with my heel and coming off my toe? Am I you know, but am I rolling forward off my toe? And then you you uh, you just play with that. You walk a while for just just feeling heel toe, heel toe, heel toe. And you're actually lifting, you're lifting your foot, doing it in profile. You know, I go like heel, good. I roll over that, come up here like this, boom, boom, boom. So like that, you know, so there's the, the foot is in an exaggerated way. You're going like this, boom, and a whoop up and whoop like that. So there is a, um, so that's, but you kind of make it more subtle and you just, you're able to go along. So then you, you, you do that. And then next thing you might want to focus on is, is am I, you know, uh, am I in central equilibrium at any point? And just start to accumulate a number of points where you can say, oh yeah, I felt like central equilibrium. And, and it will, what it'll do is it will um, enhance your energy as you're doing it. So if, if, you're, if you're finding that sweet spot, you're gonna, it's gonna feel like your, your um, like the road is rising up to meet you. It's a, uh, another thing is if you're in central equilibrium, it, it's almost like you're being pulled along by, by the, if, if, if I'm leaning backward as I'm walking, you know, I'm trucking, um, I, uh, there is, uh, I'm, I'm going uphill. Whereas if I'm in central equilibrium, I'm feeling like there's a string here kind of pulling me forward and I'm being pulled along as, as I'm doing because there's this, the system is, is working the way it's supposed to. You, you're being, you're gliding forth. So uh, uh, let's, uh, let's uh, take a seat and, and see if any questions came up and we can, I can explore any of these points uh, that uh, people might, might want to. You have a question, you have a thought? Well, I was just gonna say is, you know, if, he's, if Kim is walking every morning to, to, to his job, uh, he can also notice where the kinks are as he's walking That's true. to see where does his body tense up or feel the strain of walking and then recognize that that's where the energy is kinked and then learn, then decide, you know, how to unkink it then. That's, that's, that's a good point. So, yeah, yeah. So the, that's the other thing you can, you can just, you know, by getting, unkinking the hose, you'll find that your, your arms are, you know, a little freer, that everything's moving. You know, they're not quite as bunched up if you're in central equilibrium. If you're, if you're kinking the hose in any place, then everything is binding and you, there, there's not that freedom of movement. So if you're, if you're, you know, you got that kind of going for you, it's like, it's, it's, you're, you're gliding through your, through your walk and rather than straining at it, marching. So uh, grab a seat, please. Nick. So it's a question. You know, you were describing the, the feeling pulled here. Yeah. Um, when I, what I would experience or, or say I experience is more as though like someone has their hand in the small of my back or down just below, you know, the waist there and is kind of encouraging me along. It's not so much a pull from here as a push from down low in the back. Okay. Is that, I mean, how does that jive with what you're talking about? Uh, try, try them both out. I, I would say my, my, my indication is I'm being pushed from behind rather than being led, but from in front, I'm probably leaning backward a bit. If, 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 that, if that, that, that'd be my feeling, my instantaneous reaction to that. Let me, let me just feel into that, so. Well, what if you think of um, 
Moving, moving forward push. from the Yao. What's that? From the Yao. Yeah. From the Yao. From the Yao. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you're pushing. From it's here. like it's like leading sure. from the back instead of I leading. Guess that, 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 I think both work. I guess both work. Uh, you probably do more walking than I do, so I'm going to I'm going to bow to your uh, to to your 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 feeling. Uh, but uh, I, I like this one because I, I feel like it's like I'm going downhill no matter what's what's going on. I feel like I'm being, ah, you know, the, everything is it, quite effortless whenever that happens. But um, uh, yeah, I think both work. We're both, both are being assisted by by forces other. Cool. Anybody else? Scott. Uh, just the obvious that <clears throat> if you're always in central equilibrium, there's very little chance you're going to have an accident. You're not going to fall and break your hip. You're not going to step, you know, slip off a curb or something else because you're going to be, like you said, rooted at every point. Right. You're right. You know, and those of us up north, you know, we run into ice or black ice sometimes. And, and you, uh, you know, uh, if you are in central equilibrium and you are making you're stepping with an empty step, you know, there's a much, uh, uh, it's much easier to make a correction. You're not lunging forward, you're stepping forward and you're feeling the ground. Another thing that's happening at a, uh, for me is that every step becomes a conversation with something much bigger. So it's, it's almost, kind of a mystical magical shamanic kind of feeling that you know that you are having this conversation through your feet it's speaking in a language that is pre-verbal uh but you're having a conversation with with the earth from which all this stuff comes and if you can you know have a pleasant conversation with the earth then then um, life is better so <laughs> Lynn. Yeah, I just, that was really helpful. Thank you. Um, and I've done the, the Tai Chi walking like that before, but I guess what I was, what Maria said at the end sort of answered the question I didn't realize I was asking, which was like, if you're standing in central equilibrium, your arms are still. And when you're walking, your arms are not still, right? So it's about making sure that you've got this open as well as the quad. Right. 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 Yeah, yeah, that's super helpful. And if you're carrying a 50 pound back backpack, then you know that's well, a different game. You know? Oh no, then it's definitely lowered. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're working a little harder then, but it's uh, it's still you find even with that you find where where's my central equilibrium? Where's the point that sweet spot where forces are balanced and in a dynamic way so that you can you can well, use those forces to to help you along rather than pushing the rock up the hill well and you really have to know you know if you're walking you know with a backpack or on an even ground or whatever you really have to listen to the earth you, to, you know let your right. feet talk to the earth because you've got forces more forces than just maybe a dip in the sidewalk or whatever you know so yeah. Another thing is, is, is I used to wear a, like a shoulder bag and have my computer and, and my laptop and all kinds of stuff like that. And I always wore it over the same shoulder and it kind of created this, <laughs> this imbalance. And, uh, you know, and I have to, you know, the shoulder would ride up to, uh, to deal with that. And, and, you know, it's like, oh, dude, you don't have to do it that way. <laughs> you, know? you, you can switch shoulders, you can get a a different bag. You, you know, there's all kinds of things you can do to, to to do that. But it wasn't until the pain happened that you know I my attention went to that. You know when I was like you know I have to go to the chiropractor. How come my back feels so lousy? Oh, well you know <laughs> you <gotta> think about it. <laughs> cool. so when while we're talking about taking the stress off, for what it's worth. 
um, being a you know short-legged person and uh, having spent all my life trying to walk with people with longer legs, I realized that when I shorten my stride, it takes a lot of the impact out of the way I walk. If I walk my stride, right? So for what it's worth, play with that, you know? Um, you may be doing things you don't even realize you're doing. That's true. That's true. Good point. Good point. Valerie. Well, I noticed, um, and I thought I had a better handle on this, um, that, you know, kind of speeding up the walking, I lost it in the neck. I realized that my, it wasn't huge, but my chin would come out a little bit. I mean, I, the tailbone was good. The feet were good. The shoulders were good. Ah, the chin's out again, you know? So that was, that was very good for that, to point that out to me, that uh, I have a tendency to then lead with the head versus letting the whole body move forward. We call that the New York City walk. <laughs> I came from New York. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't that bad, but it was just enough, just enough that I could notice that it, it went out just a little bit. Right. Good. Good. Uh, is this helping, Kim? Is this, uh, is this good information? You're on mute. You're on mute. Still on mute. Oh, we froze up. Okay, we'll get back to Kim. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's there. Okay. There you are. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I mean, uh, this is gives me plenty of information to, to to go practice it tomorrow morning. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, and it, practice it without uh, the need to get anywhere, and then yeah. and then take little pieces of of what you practice and incorporate it. You know, when you are needing to get somewhere, you know, with a uh, with a full bag and uh, you know, and, and, and your grown up shoes and things like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. so, uh, <laughs> wow. well, Scott, yes, I'm. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to comment that I got a lot of energy out of that. Oh, good. I mean, like, <laughs> wow. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> just walking, wow. Walking, wow. Yeah, it, uh, that, that's terrific. So we, and we had this, this unbelievable resource available to us at any moment and you know we just have to remember to implement it and you don't have to do the whole package all at once it's nice to move that in that direction but if you just pick one thing and say oh i'm just going to walk you know reaching with the crown of my head today and that's the only thing you focus on is just walking like that and just notice what that does to your to your walk i you know i find that oh that changes everything right there. Because if I'm like this, you know, it's there's a kink in the hose, which makes everything wrong. Particularly since, you know, you have this big eight pound bowling ball there sitting on your shoulders. And, you know, if you have it forward, not only is it not a particularly good look for me, but it, uh, it requires muscular tension to maintain it in this position. Whereas if I, if I line it up, then it is organized in such a way that, that the forces are effectively neutral. So then I, uh, that it creates more energy flow. Wow. Cool. You're always finding the sweet spot in your walk. You're always finding the sweet spot. Yeah, that's right. You're, and that in and of itself, finding the sweet spot in, in, in your walk, you know, is, that's a meditation in and of itself. But you're recognizing what that feels like. Where is my body, mind, spirit integration now? You know, wow. and you're, it becomes a meditation. It's like, oh, and anytime I'm not in my sweet spot, I know that I'm working harder than I have to at life at this, at this moment. Mm. I'm pushing against life or I'm pumping the brakes on life, you know, and Saying, no, no, I want to kind of 
get this flowy thing going where you know there's a uh everything just moving along in a nice flowy kind of way and you know and occasionally like water sometimes water gets needs a big push and you do that too but you know it doesn't have to it you know, until until it runs into a barrier then you flow with it jonathan you have something that's the last word about chair tai chi the elbows you can always bring attention to the elbows i mean after the finger we were 10 20 years on the finger and the next 10 is the elbows in terms of fundamental <laughs> how do i get so much out of so little you might want to just say a word about what that does but it definitely takes attention right out of the shoulders like nothing else because if you try right. to directly say untense my shoulders yeah i don't know but if you go right to your elbows it kind of happens automatically right Right. And it's and, and it's about sending a direction, feeling the a direction of the elbows going out, because likely if you just catch yourself at any moment, the elbows are coming in and pushing everything up. So it's not even like moving them, it's just like feeling them going out without it's like each one, as we say, right? It's like feeling them going out without actually moving them out. Hmm. It's so powerful. It's like the finger. It's it's that powerful, I would say. Thank you, Jonathan. That's really, really helpful. Um I find it, in, as a rule, it's better to give the body-mind a yes rather than a no. You know, don't tense up your shoulders. Yes, reach with your elbows. You know, if you give it a yes, it's much happier. It says, okay, yes. I, I, can, I can get behind that. Yes, you know, whereas you say, no, no, no. Thou shalt not. <laughs> it gets it gets it gets pouty, you know. <laughs> it does it doesn't know what to do. So give it give it lots of yeses. Find what is what is the best way? What is the best way I can do this? You know, hey body, what do you feel like doing? You know, and and do that. So then you get, oh, okay. Hey, how about this? And let's try that. You know, it and it becomes a, a fun game that you can play for the rest of your days. So. Wow. <laughs> okay on that note thank you all so much it's been fun no don't ask going? next week we're, we're, many of us are going to be in Sedona so uh, we will not be here next week but see you in two weeks okay, okay. bye bye, bye, -bye. Uh, thank you Maria thanks Maria, bye, Maria. Bye, Maria. <laughs>